What's up everybody? Steven Z Killer here bringing another reaction to some film theory. My secret is out. I'm in Five Nights at Freddy's movie. Mad Pat was in the movie and honestly, I would say my reaction was pretty funny because I just didn't see that happening. It was a good surprise and it was a good nod to him in the movie. If you guys haven't seen the movie, I highly recommend you guys to check it out. And there is a FNAF reaction to it on the channel. It ain't the full movie. It's heavily edited, altered, and everything to make it safe for me to upload as transformative on my channel. So go enjoy, and uh, I'll see you guys in more videos, hopefully. But let's get into this video. This is a video on that secret. I don't know anything about it. I'm hoping we get more light on it and maybe even his opinion on the movie now that he, the movie's been out. Because me personally, I'm not going to go into details of the movie. I will say my my ranking for the movie, because some people have been asking me, especially on the Memberthon, which is what's going on here and why I'm wearing a Popeyes outfit. If you're wondering, this is a Halloween stream and I've been voted to wear this Popeyes outfit by the stream, by these guys right here have voted for this. And I have more costumes to wear if we hit member goals. So, look out for the live streams and all that stuff. But my ranking for the movie is a 6 out of 10. Solid movie, but at the same time still kind of mid. And I feel like there's a lot of plot points that they should have hit better. And I still feel like the last half of the movie felt rushed. And some moments felt very out of place. And some of the plot points kind of got pushed off or pushed away in a weird fashion. And that's how I felt. And I feel like the movie should have not have been only an hour and 45 minutes, even though it's an hour and 50 minutes, there's credits at the end that take five minutes. So it's more like an hour and 40 minute, uh, 45 minute movie. I feel like the movie should have been in two and a half hours. It's missing too much, but that's just my opinion. Let me know down below what your opinion is. And let's check out what Matt Pat says. Uh, link for this video will be down below in the comment section. Like always, Show your support, subscribe, don't miss out on future videos and live streams like this one, and let's get it. So, my secret's out. I can finally be honest with you. I'm in the FNAF movie! Oh, and it's been a year! And not only was oh, I in wow. the FNAF movie, my scene was the first scene shot of the entire production. Day one, scene one, I was there. I also really? got Scott Cawthon after eight years of us dancing around each other for the first time in person. But you know what? We're gonna get to all that. First and most importantly, I just need to apologize. I'm sorry that I had to lie to you for the better part of the last year to make it seem like I wasn't a part of this whole thing. I'm sorry that there were so many of you that were convinced that I wasn't in it and were mad at the production on my behalf. Trust me, I would have been mad at the production too <laughs> if I had thought the same thing. I never wanted to cause any sort of stress or anxiety or bad feelings to any one of you out there. I don't blame him for keeping a secret, especially if he's under a contract or anything like that. And Honestly, for what it's worth, I cannot tell you how wonderful it was for me to see so many of you up in arms defending my right to be a part of this thing. I see each of you, and I appreciate what you guys were doing. Seriously. It meant the world to see so many of you care and defend me like that. It was awesome. I just hope that the surprise of me walking out on stage and being revealed to be in this thing was worth all the fake out. And let me... And I know for a fact you were giddy because you were able to say... Oh, some say that's a theory! To be clear, at the end of the day, no one from the movie once gave me any sort of instructions on how to handle this whole situation. No one swore me to secrecy. There was no paperwork. There were no explicit instructions. Oh, really? Say. You just decided not to say anything? Everything else was just kind of on me. But I also knew that if I didn't cover the movie or do like live reactions to the trailers on GT Live, things like that, that you all would probably figure it out. You would sense that something was off about our content calendar, that I was hiding something something from you and in turn that would just ruin the production secret and let me tell you i did not expect them to make my life so incredibly difficult especially when they started throwing youtuber cameos into the trailers themselves thanks for that one there guys is that doco no are you kidding me where to are you kidding me fun fact by the way they actually had me read for that role literally a week before their filming started so there <laughs> i was awkwardly in my basement at midnight on a friday with steph filming me reacting to a giant robot bear in the imaginary backseat of my invisible taxi cab go go not cool man not cool oh and also in 
Wait, he was supposed to? Oh, wow, that's interesting. In case you were wondering, actually being in the movie kind of made making theories predicting what was going to be in the movie a bit tricky. I had the whole script, and so basically, unless they rewrote the whole thing, I knew basically all the major story beats. It kind of felt like I would be cheating somehow or spoiling the movie in advance unfairly. So instead, that film theory prediction of the movie was one of the few times where I actually took a complete step back from the channel and was almost entirely leaving the script in someone else's hands, letting film theory... Oh! handle all the heavy lifting based on that was fucking smart of him having somebody else basically write the script of the theory so because he had he had the script he knew what the story was okay information that was available via the trailers and i gotta say i was surprised with just how much he got right and also some of the things that he missed but you know what that's a theory for another day anyway so yeah almost exactly one year ago all the way back in november of 2022 i was contacted by blumhouse to be a part of the movie or bad cupcake as they were calling it back then a secret code name so no one discovered what it was <laughs> a week before flying out they were still shuffling me around to see what my part would be and on february 1st day one scene one i was in new orleans to film this thing hey there welcome to sparky's <laughs> ah. okay but let's get real the whole actor thing is kind of crazy they're like no we will bring the stuff to you and oh you can stay in your trailer i'm like it's okay i can go get my own food they're like, no, but you are the actor. One thing off the bat that I didn't expect was actually the scale of this thing because it was massive. And you're probably thinking, well, no dub, Matt, it was a movie, but I guess that never really registered with me. I mean, I've done professional theater before. I've done things like big Mr. Beast shoots where he takes over entire football stadiums. How different could this actually be? Well, it was different. It was huge. I have never seen anything this size before. The number of people, the coordination. I had a costume fitting the day before. And for my dinky little cameo of three lines in this movie, I kid you not, they had me try on 20 different combinations of outfits, all of which had to then be run by the director and Scott for their approval. I mean, an entire floor of a building was just full wall to wall. My cat was let in. Hundreds and hundreds of hey, outfits. No Mike alone had practically an entire wall all to himself. It was actually there that I got to see who else was going to be a part of this movie up on the wall. That's where I actually learned that Corey was going to be a cab driver for the first time. It was also where I saw that good old Markiplier was supposed to be the security guard who gets killed at the very beginning of the movie. But probably Wait, what? Of all, it's there. Wait, what? Hold up, hold up. So it was true Mark was going to be in the fucking movie? Security guard who gets killed at the very beginning of the movie. Oh, that would have been awesome. But probably, most importantly of all, it's there that I also saw the withered, dabbing Chica posted on the wall like some sort of guardian angel over the production. Basically, I was just doing the whole theorist thing by trying to pick up as many small details and Easter eggs as I could in what few moments I had left unsupervised. Funny enough, it turns out the production staff were trying to do the exact same thing right back at me. From the moment I stepped into my first costume fitting, people started to grill me about FNAF. No joke. Apparently, they had been briefed that I was someone who... Yeah, I did, I did hear about the fact that his Iron Lung movie interfered with him being part of the first movie. I did hear about that, yes. Studied the franchise. I also saw a lot of comments about it in the reaction to the FNAF movie. And so I was getting inundated with all sorts of questions about the type of person that Mike is, or how I saw William Afton in my mind's eye, or whether I could give them information about characters like Abby. I honestly think it was them trying to get a feel for whether they were on the right track with all of this, how the community as fans might respond to all of this world that they'd created, which honestly is pretty cool. The same thing happened the next day when we were on location at the shoot where all the other actors in my scene between setups would take I know, I know he's in the movie and everything and I pro he probably did enjoy it, but I hope he gives us a pretty honest like review or feelings on the movie in some sense. Like he probably won't rate it, but I would, I would like to know how he felt about the movie's overall story and conclusion take time to ask me about how their characters behaved in the games how their role fit into the overarching narrative of the franchise what you gotta say was kind of a bummer because all the characters in my scene were just made up for the movie so didn't have a whole lot of detail to impart on them. So instead of all that, Heather Stewart Masterson, uh, she's Aunt Jane in the movie. She just ended up asking me a also fuck that bitch. A lot of questions about the parallels. Not the actress, the character she played. Between Abby and <laughs> Baby from the game, since that's the one that her character is probably most focused on. In general, though, it was clear that across the board, everyone was so eager to do the franchise justice. They wanted to know as much as they could. They wanted to learn. They wanted to absorb all that information, and they were proud to be a part. 
of a project and being able to show it off. The only sad part of it all was that I was so early in this process, most of the stuff wasn't even ready for me to see yet. They really wanted to show me the pizzeria, but schedule-wise, the first month of production was dedicated to everything happening outside of the pizzeria, meaning that the set, it was still being built. It was still in process. So when they took me to see it, they just got a lot of blank walls. And don't get me wrong, they were impressive blank walls. Very big, very majestic oh, wow. blank walls. But still, left a lot to the imagination. Same thing kind of happened when they showed me the animatronics. Everything was still locked away because it needed final testing, so the most I got was like a little peek through a sliver in the wall. It's awesome. I think I could make out the murder mask. I'm like, what's up with that weird Freddy head? And they're like, I don't know, creative decision. But come to think of it, it actually kind of worked out really well because when it came time to react to the trailers when they were being uploaded... They still never... I, I... Not, not really a spoiler and if you're watching this at this point it, yeah be ready for spoiler stuff they really didn't explain the whole blender mask thing they really never explained that youtube i didn't have to make anything because it was truly my first time getting to see all of this thing finished sure i knew the storyline of the movie uh i had the whole script in my hands and i knew what part i played in this whole thing but seeing it all actually getting to experience how it all worked together it was my first time. No fake reactions here, my friends. And to be honest, the thing about it is he has the full, the like early full script. I'm wondering how much was cut that isn't known because there, I still say this and I said this in my review of the movie. There's moments that feel rushed and or is missing context for why things happen the way they did. It doesn't feel like the whole movie was given to us and because of that the pacing suffered seeing it on camera doesn't do the scale of this whole thing justice i cannot stress to you how massive this production was they literally built an entire restaurant inside of an old abandoned home depot in new orleans hallways rooms it was a complete restaurant which was just mind-blowing to me most movies would probably try to do some clever camera tricks or green screening or something but no they built an entire building from the ground up inside of another building that is cool to know it's crazy as far as my role in all of this i had a one day shoot and that actual day i had to wake up at 4 a.m and then find a car that had been left for me in a random parking garage the night before inside the car were creepy explicit driving instructions to a secret location really felt like something straight out of a spy movie from there i drove an hour <laughs> out of town to a random diner that had been shut down due to covid once we were on location they actually gave me my own trailer they told me that's not the sort of thing that a day player would normally get but they wanted to give us youtubers the star treatment which i gotta say was just like incredibly generous of them that's right as a fan of fnaf i still enjoyed it but i can't give it more than a six out of ten mystic yep Three lines, baby. Looks like it. Nice. I'm gonna be hanging out. Here are the next two episodes of season three are gonna be written from. Inside my trailer, I found <laughs> this. This guy right here, little rubber chicken head, little pencil topper. He was in one of the drawers, and so I, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna work him into my character. And so if you see him in the movie, that's it. It's a little Easter egg for you. And oh. Later, it was on the set. Okay. For the next eight. I think it was on the pen that he was holding. Scene. One diner scene. You heard that right. Eight straight hours. One thing. Why so long? They had the cameras set up outside. Then they had to move the cameras inside. Then they had to have the specialty close-up cameras. Then they had to remove half the booth to capture one side of a conversation. Then remove the other half of the booth. Replace the other half of the booth to capture the other side of the conversation. Then they had to remove the booth entirely so they could put cameras right here and capture a close-up of my face. There were B-rolls of different tables getting served. There were B-rolls and specialty shots of dishes getting served up at the window. It <laughs> was a lot. For what ultimately amounts in the movie to be like three minutes of footage as you might imagine we all started to get a bit creative with how we were filling our time with each take right what are you doing i'm filming this for eventually when i do the like hey i was in this movie and it's behind the oh scenes oh my goodness wow so no pressure hey <laughs> <laughs> the length of time between takes as they moved cameras along also gave me plenty of chances to explore the set for any hints of lore. And I actually found a lot of really fun details buried in the walls. Like, uh, here's one time where I found the fake diner's registration information. Here's another one where I found a QR code that I was almost convinced was trying to be a start of some new ARG. Then I learned that it wasn't. At which point, I decided to call that detail out to the production team as being anachronistic since this was meant to be set at a time before QR codes became mainstream. And then they promptly took it down. So, TL... That was smart of him. ...of this entire video, 
I single-handedly saved the FNAF movie. By the way, on the subject of small details, I don't know if you noticed it in the movie, but the diner I work in is called Sparky's Diner, which is a reference to one of the earliest urban legends from the first FNAF game, that there was this dog animatronic named Sparky hidden somewhere. I saw people talking about uh, that in the comments. I actually didn't know about this. Inside. The movie is actually full. And apparently there's a uh, reference to him in the movie with a costume in the background. Full of these sorts of Easter eggs. For instance, my character's official name right here. It's Ness. I don't know if you've noticed this one in the movie, but it's Ness. And I was told by everyone that Scott specifically called out that he needed me to be named Ness. At first, I immediately thought like, oh, this gotta be a reference to Ness from FNAF AR. Or maybe this is another instance of Vanessa from Security Breach. You know, just Scott trolling people by using the same name over and over again. But no, when I met him later in the day, he told me it was a reference to Sans's Ness. He was very proud of himself. <laughs> ah, that cheeky motherfucker. Speaking of, the man, the myth, the legend himself, Scott Cawthon. The whole time, it was unclear whether Scott would actually be there on set. It was one of those things that people were like, we don't know if Scott's going to be there. He might show up. We asked him if he's going to show up on the first day. I, I thought that was a little bit weird. I mean, it's your first day of shooting your movie that's been like five plus years in the making. I don't know. You'd think that you'd try to make an appearance there or something, right? Well, he did, but apparently it was a big surprise. He flew in special for that day. It was interesting. Most of the production crew didn't know who he was. They just knew him as the VIP on set, who everyone had to listen to if he asked them to do something, but no one actually understood what he was, that he was the creator of the game. I, I think ultimately it winds up being a movie thing, you know, where he's just responsible for talking to the director, who's then the one who's executing on his creative vision. So a lot of the rest of the day-to-day -day staff don't really need to know that this is the man that gave them a reason to be there in the first place. But yeah, I got to meet him. It was great. He has a good strong handshake and he looks you in the eye when you talk which is always the sign of a upstanding person he was wearing a uh, classic zelda t-shirt which big props to that one and uh he was doing a great job honestly of directing everyone i overheard him consulting some of the costume department and clearly outlining his vision of what everyone should be wearing which was really cool i think most people would probably have been intimidated by this massive production all leaning on him but it was just really impressive to watch he made sure that I knew about the whole Ness joke and also about how he gave the waiter role bonus lines. In fact, he was so proud of that one line that he asked me to go over the top with it like I do in the videos as part of the scene. And I did it for one take and it was weird, especially with everyone else in the scene taking the scene so seriously. And so we all decided to keep it a bit more toned down. He took a Okay, so Scott himself pushed for that. Okay, all right, all right. That's awesome to hear. Before I left for the day and I said I'll see you again at the premiere and uh well there's no premiere so I guess that's the last time I'm ever gonna see him oh and uh no to answer your obvious question we did not talk about lore we both swore that one off instead we talked about the community and how we both expected the community to take this particular script in the end he was just really grateful for me being able to be a part of the movie and that was mind-blowing to me because I'm like are you kidding I was the one who was lucky. I got to be in this mainstream movie. How cool <laughs> is that? Growing up, acting was one of my dreams. To be a performer, that was always like the end goal for me for like the first 18 years of my life. And since then, that goal's obviously changed a lot. I've moved on. I've done something, honestly, that I'm more proud of here, where I'm able to make a business and perform as myself instead of as a character. But Game theory, the film theory, food theory, clothes theory. Pet had nearly a decade ago. Actually, it recorded a bit of my... And if you combine all the subscriptions together, he's gotten like 40 million subscribers almost. As I was getting ready to leave the set. Or, or close to that. It felt important to document. And that's a wrap. I was there. I was in it. Kind of sad. But it was cool to see a childhood dream in some ways get realized. It was kind of like I got a peek into a multiverse of another life of mine. And then that was it. Back home, like nothing had ever happened. I did keep the pencil topper and the name tag as souvenirs, though. So, uh, mm -hmm. yes, I did steal from the set of FNAF the movie. Uh, for two days, this was just a small window into something. To be fair, they're, they're small props that you would only use. That was so big. Okay, maybe not the pencil topper. I got to be a visitor in this massive machine that I hopped off of and then that just continued on without me. Man. Let me tell you, it is surreal to see posters going up in theaters of a movie that you're in. Oh, 
Can I, can I level with you for a second? This whole thing, it was so intimidating. You know how I keep doing videos this year about being in the PGA Tour or producing a Broadway show and how the theme of the year happens to be like, say yes and to your life. Well, this was actually the first of those things because it was at the top of the year. This was the thing that got me started on the whole theme because it is one thing to speak as yourself on a couch about things that you know, and it is something entirely different to walk in as a complete noob and say scripted lines as a random character named after a meme to a crew of seasoned <laughs> actors while they're stopping public traffic outside and 50 production staff are slowly zooming a camera into your face. I mean, I've done a lot of performances, but this... This was just at another level. <laughs> the only thing that I asked the director, Emma, to make sure of was that I didn't deliver some sort of like cringy YouTuber performance. You know what I mean. It can't not be cringy when you're saying you're like, oh, that's <laughs> phrase, that's kind of silly. But, you know, I just I didn't want to bring the movie down. And to me, uh, to be 100%, I think he did it pretty well. Yes, I'm glad he didn't go full like, it's a theory. But I, 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 I think he did well enough. I, I think he did all right. That right there, my friends, that is my story, and it feels so good, so good to finally come clean about it. I have wanted to bring you in as a part of this journey for the longest time. In the end, I just, I cannot thank the team there enough for all their incredible generosity and their patience. And Scott, thank you for giving me the chance to be a part of this. But most importantly, thank you. This whole thing, this is our collective victory, right? Because without you supporting me or supporting these channels and supporting these wacky theories, None of this would have been possible. And if you haven't seen the movie, then what the heck are you waiting for? Watch it and then go watch it again. Show <laughs> them the force of Team Internet so that the late night hosts and the executive producers finally learn that things from the... I will say, go watch, go enjoy the movie. But more than once is not probably necessary. The internet deserved to be pronounced correctly. Anyway, in the end... Who knows? Maybe there'll be room in the sequel for the return of a well-meaning cringy waiter with a love of breakfast and a meme-ish name. But until then, remember, that's not a theory. It's just a video. Video for you. Thanks for watching. <laughs> all right, all right. That was cool. Uh, honestly, I wasn't no, I wasn't 100% knowing what was going to happen in this. And I think this was pretty good to watch, though. I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction. Surprise one. Hope you guys enjoyed. Don't miss out on live streams. Don't miss out on videos. I upload daily. So even if you don't see something through your feed, if you're subscribed, uh, and even if you have the notification bell and you don't see anything in your feed, just go check out the channel see what I upload. I post daily. And also, if I'm still live during this time frame you're watching this, come say hi. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video because I still got 11 hours and 14 minutes to go. Let's do it. All right, bye.